Ever since the 1990s, Pokemon has made an absolutely massive name for itself, and the hype is still as huge as ever, especially with the latest games, Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet, two games with very similar but slightly different stories, and also the first mainline Pokemon games to utilize an open world. While the game may not be perfect, one of the things it's praised for is its great characters, from rivals to the evil team and everyone else in between. I'm Kyle with Pokebinge, and this is Pokemon Scarlet and Violet characters good to evil. First, a couple quick notes. First off, the differences between these two games are minor, with the biggest difference being the professors and the version exclusive Pokemon. That said, we will be distinguishing version differences when necessary. Secondly, this video will include major spoilers. And finally, we'll mostly be referring to the actions of the protagonist with the term you, as the actions are mostly controlled by the player, although we may also refer to them as the protagonist or by their official names, Florian and Juliana. As usual, we'll be starting with our most noble character and working our way down to the most evil. These characters are the good. Taking the gold medal of good is Florian slash Juliana. These are the main protagonists of Scarlet and Violet, controlled by you as you have your adventures throughout the Paldea region. Unlike a lot of other recent games, due to a lack of major choices or alternate endings, we know canonically how these two act in the story. They are amazing Pokemon trainers, a savant who is able to beat almost anybody and catch almost any Pokemon. Throughout the game, they make friends quickly, with Nimona, Arvin, and Cassiopeia, with very few issues, and this leads to them doing massive amounts of good. They they manage to defeat the Pokemon League and give Nimona the best battle of her life. They save Mabostiff with the Herba Mystica, and they even take down Team Star, so they can come back to school. In fact, while one could argue some of their actions are self-centered, that all goes out the window when they save all of the Paldea region with their abilities. These two unequivocally take the Gold Medal of Good without any contest. Taking the Silver Medal of Good is Mom. Your mother, often referred to as just Mom, is a character who appears briefly in the beginning of the game. She is a very sweet and loving person who's done nothing but good in her appearance. She creates a sandwich for you, which heals the legendary with its tastiness. She also offers strangers who enter her home tea, showing she is quite the hostess and willing to be friendly with just about anyone. She also goes as far as to buy you a new and fancy Rotom phone for your first day of school. Mom is a great person, but sadly she can't take the gold medal of good because she didn't save the entire Paldea region like you did, but she did raise you. Taking our bronze medal of good is Jacques. Jacques is an intelligent Pokemon researcher who appears throughout the game, but mostly as your homeroom and biology teacher. Jacques is a researcher who instructs students through the academy, and he's apparently quite famous because of the fact he created the iconic Pokedex app that the students use in the game. Jacques is kind of a klutz who gets really excited about data, so much so that he tends to get lost in his own research sometimes. Jacques is a great guy, but he also lacks screen time, so we can't rank him any higher. Up next, we have Nimona, arguably one of the three main characters beyond the protagonist. She is your neighbor and an instant good friend after your first meeting. Nimona is a champion ranked Pokemon trainer who is one of the strongest Pokemon trainers in the entire series. She instantly takes a liking to you, trying to get you to become her friend and rival. She is also the student council president and an enthusiastic trainer who helps you through your gym journey constantly popping up whenever you face down a gym. She regularly tries to battle against you and even makes sure you obtain your Terra Orb so you can become stronger. Nimona works with you throughout the game, making sure you're at your maximum potential throughout the story. She's also one of the three people who joins you on the quest into Area Zero. Nimona is partly responsible for your saving of the Paldea region, though she didn't take on a massive role in that act. The first of many gym leaders on our list is Katie. Katie, ostensibly named the Sugar Bug, is the bug type gym leader of the Paldea region. She works with the Pokemon League as a pretty friendly and well-known gym Gym leader. In fact, her main job is not actually being a gym leader, it's baking, and she owns her own bakery in town. Katie's also shown caring for injured animals, such as a pavilion who doesn't seem to be eating. Katie is definitely the most caring gym leader in Paldea. Next up, we have Miriam. Miriam is the nurse of the academy and a Pokemon trainer in her own right. 
In fact, she's a character that you can seemingly entirely miss during the main story, as you can only interact with her in the academy, which you aren't in for the majority of the game. Miriam's main claim to fame is that she wants to learn all about your adventures since she feels stuck where she is. However, you inspire her to become a health teacher, which she passes the exam for and follows her dreams, calling you her inspiration. Next, we have our first Elite Four member, Hassel, one of four of the strongest and most important Pokemon trainers in the Paldea region. In fact, he acts as the final hassle, pun intended, of the Elite Four before you make your way into the battle against the champion. Hassle pops up early on in the game to congratulate you for how your adventure is going. He informs you of how he works in the school as an art teacher. When you finally face him, it becomes obvious he won't hold back despite your young age simply because he admires your skills. After beating him, he starts crying in what seems to be pure elation, showing that he truly admires you. Jumping back over to the gym leaders once more, we have Kofu. Kofu is the water type gym leader in the Paldea region, where he works out of Cascafara. Kofu is a bit childish and forgetful, often forgetting his wallet at home when he goes to the auction market. He also seems to be quite popular with the children in his town as they applaud when he arrives. He's also known as the surging chef, since his main job is actually to cook for the town in his restaurant. Kofu also seems like a jolly guy, as he laughs a lot when we see him. Definitely a good guy, but his childishness does mean he often gets Gets himself and others into trouble. Next up is the battle master Dendra. Dendra is a teacher at the academy specializing in battle studies. She goes and teaches the many students how to grow strong with their Pokemon and seems to be quite skilled. However, what really keeps her in the good section is that she seems to be good enough friends with Tulip to help at her gym. She says that she lost a bet of some kind to work with Tulip's gym so that she can lead in the emotional spectrum practice. A good person for the most part, but she's also a bit brutal and pushes her students a bit too much. Moving on, next we have Gita. Gita is the top champion, the highest ranking champion in all of the region. She's also the chairwoman of the Pokemon League as a whole, where she inspects and works with each of the gyms. She seems to have taken quite a liking to you as a trainer, and especially with how much you seem to rival Nimona. Gita meets you on multiple occasions, watching your gym journey as it goes along. However, the reason we rank her here on our list is simply because she enlists one of her most important jobs to a literal child, even if they save the Paldea region. And she also seems a bit too lenient on heavy criminal actions, which does weigh against her a bit. Rounding out our good section is probably the most gray looking man in the series, Larry. Larry is an interesting case because he takes up both the slots of a gym leader and an Elite Four member. This is because being under Gita's employment, she forces him to do both. He seems to like being a gym leader better simply because he utilizes normal type Pokemon that he feels better reflects his normal image. Larry is a very dull guy and spends most of his time complimenting the player and eating food from his gym. Larry doesn't seem to like his job all that much, especially compared to other gym leaders and Elite Four members, but we will keep him ranked just barely in the good section. And with that said, we now enter more neutral territory. These characters fall in the moral gray area. Starting out this section is Rhyme. Rhyme is the ghost type gym leader in the Paldea region and quite a friendly face in her town. In fact, she's quite famous, not only in her town, but as a region-wide rap artist. She's known to make good friends with those around her, and will even rap battle anyone who comes up on stage showing that she's willing to have fun with her fans. She's even willing to do one with the protagonist after her defeat in a Pokemon battle. Though we do have to place her here in the gray area, as she doesn't hold back on the insults. Next up we have Rika of the Elite Four. She works as the head interviewer in the first battle of the assessment, meaning that she is the one who deals with the most amount of students. She seems quite sweet and seems to like you and Nimona for the most part. However, she is also quite vain and thinks she's a lot better than she actually is, although most of this personality melts away by the time you face against her at the assessment. But we will rank her down here for her vanity. The final member of the Elite Four, Poppy, ranks next. 
Poppy is a very young Pokemon trainer who acts as the second hurdle in the Elite Four. She is a very good friend of Raika, and the two may even be related to some degree. And she also refers to Hassel as Grandpa, but it's unknown their relationship. Poppy specializes in Steel-type Pokemon and has earned her status as an Elite Four member. However, what really drags her down is the fact that she is very headstrong, overconfident, and vain. And she continually bashes you and calls herself better. She's also very young which means she literally cries when she loses which is another issue. Poppy doesn't have enough time beyond her fight to really rank anywhere else, so here she stands as a member of the gray area. A bit further down, we have Arvin. Arvin is one of the three main rivals in the game alongside Nimona and Penny, and also one of your only friends in the game. You meet him quite early on in the game, where he comes off as more of an old school style jerk rival. Arvin is the son of the professor and was raised mostly by his Pokemon. Arvin is sort of a slacker who skips classes so he can pursue his real dream of cooking. He hunts down the magical Herba Mystica, which are used to heal the aforementioned Pokemon. It becomes obvious that he is estranged from his parent and thinks very little of them. He finds everything they do to be suspicious in some way. Arvin has severe issues with his parents, but he does seem to still care deeply about them regardless. Moving on to the snowboarder extraordinaire, Grusha. Grusha is the ice-type gym leader of the Paldea region and one of the best snowboarders in the region as well. Grusha was referred to as the Sub-Zero Shredder as he became an immensely well-known and popular snowboarder that gathered quite the fan base prior to his time as a gym leader. As a gym leader, he serves little purpose other than as an obstacle after what is seemingly an injury of some kind. This gets to the point where Grusha seems to threaten you during your fights despite having no reason to do so. Another gym leader on our list is Brassius. Brassius is the gym leader you can face off against quite early. In fact, because of his usage of grass types, he is actually quite weak with the correct starter in hand. Regardless, Brassius is an artist first and a gym leader second, as he spends most of his time fighting you, praising your abilities as a battler. He's also shown to put himself in danger for his art, such as jumping from the windmill for a good entrance. The reason why we ranked him so low, however, is because he seems sort of obsessed with you, a child we might add, and your avant-garde skills. Now this wouldn't be that bad if it wasn't for his general stalker vibes and obsession with you, which is just a bit odd to say the least. From one gym leader to another, we now have Tulip. Despite what her name might imply, Tulip is actually the psychic type gym leader, not any sort of grass type. Tulip works throughout the Paldea region as a fashion designer who also works as a gym leader. She appears briefly where she seems to find Pokemon battling of lesser importance to her other job. However, whilst vain and sort of annoying, she is the one responsible for ESP, or Emotional Spectrum Practice, a training and meditation technique that seems to help those who use it. The final gym leader on our list is none other than Ayano. She is the electric type gym leader in Paldea, but like many other members of the gym leading community, her main job is something else. She gets most of her money from streaming and videos, like a YouTuber or Twitch streamer. She has plenty of fans, so much that they'll fight you on a whim if she orders it. She refers to them as Pokemaniacs, and they seem almost brainwashed. That said, we don't want to claim that she's evil or hypnotizing folks. She's just very popular with a large fan base. What does drag her down is her own ego as she spends most of her free time streaming, which pretty quickly goes to her head. And rounding out the gray area is the Academy's very own Director Clavel. Clavel is an interesting case because it seems like at first he's intended to throw you off as a villain. He first appears by entering your home unannounced and gifting you a starter and then congratulating you for getting to the Academy. Clavel is the director of the Academy and does everything he can to better it. However, this tends to means some pretty heinous, but not illegal stuff. Firstly, he does hide his identity on multiple occasions, mostly as Clive, as part of Operation Starfall. He lies on multiple occasions, but does try his best to stop anyone from harming themselves with things like entering Area Zero. And he does try his hardest to be protective and a good person, and once he learns the truth about Team Star, he rescinds his previous assumptions of them. Clavel is a good guy at times, but his constant lying and sneaking around definitely weighs out against him. Now we've reached the dark side. These characters are the bad and the evil. Starting off the bad section of our list is Don Atticus. 
Atticus is one of the five bosses of Team Star, specializing in poison-type Pokémon. He leads the Navi Squad, where he happily runs the squad while also working on the modified uniforms that each of the Star bosses wear. Much like the other bosses of Team Star, he was a victim of bullying mostly because of his Shakespearean style of speech. He's also said to be descended from ninjas, and while he doesn't show it often, he cares deeply for everyone around him. Atticus is the one who tries to get Aerie to rest after an intense training session, and and he apparently saved the life of a young trainer. So, like other members of Team Star, he isn't totally evil. The next Star boss on our list is Giacomo. He's another of the five bosses of Team Star, where he specializes in Dark-type Pokémon as the leader of Seijin Squad. He is a DJ, specifically known as DJ Vice, and he's a pretty sharp guy that makes all the music for Team Star. He seems to be the one with the best connection to the big boss, and this means he is usually the one relaying info from what we see. In fact, he used to be Student Council President, where he had to step down simply because he was known for enforcing far too strict and far too elaborate rules. He apparently acted like a dictator when he was president, but he joined Team Star and sort of mellowed out. Moving further down our list, we have Ortega. Ortega is another member of Team Star, specializing in fairy-type Pokémon and leading the Rukba squad. Ortega is sort of a spoiled brat and is told as much by other members at times. He comes from a rich background where he gets a lot of money from his parents. However, he does try to break from the stereotype. He is the head mechanic of the team, creating the powerful and annoying Starmobiles that the bosses use in their fights. Ortega is also pretty quick to anger, and whilst he has a short fuse, he tends to force grunts to do everything. Next we have Mela. Mela is the fire-type boss for Team Star. Of course, like a lot of Team Star, she turned to the team because she was bullied and she now leads a whole faction of grunts. She has a very short fuse and a very bad temper, which fits her fire-type Pokémon. She is the all-rounder of the team, solving any and all problems that cross their path. However, she is the star boss with the highest standards as she only fights those who come looking for trouble. That said, the way she blows up on her foes and her own grunts definitely solidifies her place here in the bad section. Another Team Star boss is up next, none other than Aerie. She's the fighting type boss of Team Star. Aerie is a weird case because unlike a lot of other members on the team, she cares so deeply for the team itself she would physically fight any threats that come across it. She guarded her own gate and trains herself to the point of exhaustion on multiple occasions. Aerie is the one who trains the team in Pokemon battling, and she seems to never stop despite the actions of her allies. She even threatens to bury anyone who crosses Team Star. So she is a very loyal person, which means she connects to her team very quickly. And although that is admirable, it is towards a team that does, without question, a lot of really bad things. Taking the Bronze Medal of Evil is Penny, aka Cassiopeia. Penny is a student you meet early on in the game, where she makes a pretty good impression of a secretive person. Later on, we find out that Penny and Cassiopeia are one and the same, which means that we'll be talking about both of their actions. Cassiopeia enlists the player on Operation Starfall, which at first seems like a good idea where they want you to take down the assumedly evil Team Star. As the game goes on, more and more light is shined on Team Star and the supposed big boss. While we find out that Team Star aren't as bad as we were led to believe, it's assumed the big boss is. As the game goes on and all the bosses are defeated, it turns out that Cassiopeia is the big boss, and that's Penny. She formed a group to stop bullying and enlisted them in Operation Star to scare off the bullies, although this led to a bad reputation. Penny does save her reputation by becoming a friend of you and helping to save the Paldea region, but considering her constant lying and her hacking into the League system to give out stolen points, she is the most criminally minded of the group. Taking the Silver Medal of Evil is AI Sata slash Turo. The biggest twist in the story is that the Professor Sato or Turo, who you see all throughout the game is actually an artificial intelligence created by the original. This is one that helps you throughout your quest, such as teaching you about the legendary's capabilities and also leading you throughout Area Zero. This AI seems like a good guy on the surface, but we can't rank them any higher for one reason. Their programming turns them into the Paradise Protection Program, which legitimately tries to kill you and other children to protect a destructive time machine. Sure, the AI wants you to win, but 
but they can't control their homicidal tendencies. Which brings us to the gold medal of evil, which obviously goes to Professor Sada slash Turo. The professor is unironically the main antagonist of the game, serving as a first for the mainline Pokemon series. This was heavily foreshadowed prior to the game's release when Jacques being billed as a more typical professor in Pokemon Go. Regardless, much like Chairman Rose or Luzamine, the professor becomes a sort of twist villain late in the game. Now, we don't know too much about them beyond their relation to Arvin, their Pokemon studies, and time travel love. They spend most of their time on this time machine. While they sacrifice themselves to save the legendary Pokemon, it doesn't change what really pulls them down so far. They became so obsessed with their time machine, they pulled out all the stops so that it wouldn't be harmed. They built the AI professor with a program that forces them to attempt to harm anyone who tries to turn the time machine off. They also created the Paradise Protection Program, or PPP, which is an even stronger version. They cared very little for anything beyond their time travel, and whilst they died for it, they never got any sort of redemption, which is why they earned the Gold Medal of Evil. But let us know if you agree with our ranking, and tell us what other Pokemon Scarlet and Violet topics you want to see from us next. Remember to hit that notification bell and binge our other Pokemon videos. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.